Hello everyone, this is Ian, also known as a Blender Guppy. In this video, I'm going to model a, a simple grenade using the random flow add-on. So it's going to be just a simple uh, spherical shaped uh, grenade with a transparent side. With a bottom side, which is going to be transparent and it's going to show some uh, mechanism on the inside in the inside so let's give this a more topology so in the documentation there's a chapter about how you can use the add-on much better with curved surfaces okay so the top half will be opaque opaque and the bottom half will be transparent or made of glass so let's separate this I'm not sure it's, I'm going to use V so V to split and this is still a, a single object so I'm going to select these by pressing L and P to separate and then click on selection okay and give this thickness control F and solidify then as you can see here this is the redo panel you can access it here and also by pressing F9 in the viewport So that's going inside and this is going outside. And uh, but as you can see the normals are flipped because we are modifying the thickness towards the uh, outside. So we can fix that by selecting everything. Alt N and recalculate outside. Let's auto smooth. Actually, this is it's a bit thick, but instead of uh, modifying this, let's just pattern this up using Alt S, selecting everything, everything Alt S, and I'm pressing Shift. So if you if you use Alt S, so I'm going to press S right here. You can see the properties. You can see S or Alt for even even, uh, even thickness. So let's use that. And to slow down the increments of the change as I modify the size, I can press Shift. And let's give this a bit of a thickness also. Okay. You can of course uh, do it differently and make it as a single object, but here I uh, used two objects. I separated them to two objects so I can better handle the modeling on each part. Okay, I'm going to select the inside of these faces. I can go I can I can go on this uh on two ways. I can select this vert here and press Ctrl plus to select more. Or I can select the edges of of the of the area that I want and then select select more or less select all by trait and interior Nope. Um, interior faces. No. Select loops. Select loop in a region. There we go. You can press F9 and toggle on select bigger to 
invert the selection or just press ctrl i after the fraction to invert it i am in edge selection mode as you can see so you can switch to, to face selection using number three and then control i it's, it's as simple as that so i'm gonna flatten these faces this is quick favorites all of the commands here are inherent to blender you can find it using the search menu for example flatten flatten is part of the loop tools add-on you have to enable the loop tools add-on in the uh, user preferences it can it is free and it uh, is shipped with a blender so i can just when you search for it you can just right click on it there it is mesh loop tools flatten right click and add the favorites then if you press q it will show up on q just like select loop in a region if you can find it if you're having trouble finding it just type it in the search bar select loop inner region right click add to quick favorites if it is in uh, the quick favorites you can then just remove it right here remove from quick favorites and then add to quick favorites okay just uh just a basic introduction on blender commands okay this is the top of the grenade i'm gonna use a timer type thing to timer type thing for the actually let's make the top bigger selecting the edge select loop in the region extrude up flatten the faces or you can just flatten this using scale s scale to the z axis press z and press zero okay um let's see i'm going to mirror this in the x and y axis so auto mirror so this is going to be in 1.6 um, you can see there's a ui this is going to be in the next version update so uh, this is the first phase where you click the area to mirror so i'm going to mirror this area here i am using this mini widget here as a guide let's use this part here i'm going to click on this area click and second phase where i select or use the hotkeys xyz to toggle on the uh symmetry axis i want the area to be mirrored so right here it's showing me the axis right now nothing is toggled on and this is the area that i picked to be mirrored indicated by the stripped uh, line and if I press X, you can see the X uh, direction or X axis color up. So RG, X, Y, Z is RGB. Next is Y. And this is the Y axis. We don't need Z because we don't need this mirrored in the Z axis. So press space to confirm. Okay. So this is our real geometry side. And this side here is the geometry that is uh, created by the mirror modifier you cannot access this because this is mirror geometry in the next version you can extract uh, faces from this area using the extract faces operator and this will allow you to create asymmetric details use uh, asymmetric details on uh, mirrored objects and the result is non-mirrored you can observe okay kind of force mirror this treat it as a normal mesh 
use it for randomization or create another object with it. Okay, let's <coughs> go to design the top top part more. And draw poly mesh. Press Shift C. Uh, C. I'm going to press C outside uh, uh, the 3D space, the empty 3D space, to put the origin on the center of the object. If I press C on the surface of the object, you can see that it's uh, the origin marker snaps there. So when I draw the draw object based on the viewport, uh, is created there. But if I put the press T on open 3D space, now it's on center. If I draw something, it's going to be on the center of the object. Okay. So position the marker. And I'm going to use polygonal number two. So this UI here becomes can become blocked by the redo panel. So when I edit this and it, this becomes creative flow in the future, it's going to have this kind of it's going to change over to this kind of UI. And also the tools will be simplified. Okay, so draw poly mesh, position the marker, and let's draw our object. Um, let's try and rotate this using the 3D cursor. Okay. That's our top half. This is still using uh, solid the solidify modifier and the yeah. So you can use edit draw modifiers and solidify thickness control plus mouse drag offset to reset the offset and the solidify press T. Okay, so we can design the we can we as you can see since this is using the solidify modifier, we can't access the this is essentially a this is essentially like this. So we can't access the entire geometry. But this helps us be, uh Design the object using the profile, the shape profile. Or cut it. Like that. Okay, let's cut it like this. And delete the face. Bevel.
we can actually get rid of this uh, faces underneath using the let's just use the uh, dive tool for that okay and then oops we can probably triangulate this up and then alt j to quantify and then okay let's use the knife it's okay activate c to cut through and then click right click for another cut and then click and delete this so this is let's see okay control z let's turn it into a real object apply draw modifier and then let's establish a mirror modifier in the y-axis so this also has or set mirror ice tools but it's not it's not as uh, modernized so to speak as the random flow so why okay so if ever we need to change something it's going to be symmetrized okay uh, we are just essentially designing the base before we start using the actually there is I'm using inset but if you use it like that you can see here in the symmetry line there's a face to get rid of that you must press B to deactivate the uh, boundary so press B oops it has to be during the operation press B and confirm and as you can see here no longer there's no longer a face in the symmetry line but it has this part has ripped up the symmetry line we can manually just reposition it or use ice tools control click on this button clip center axis and as you can see it's gonna clip the uh, separated line in the symmetry axis in the XYZ axis and clip them together okay so let's what else um the inner mechanism the inner mechanism cursor selected oops cursor selected there we go let's create a circle here Oh, there's no boundary. Boundary. Let's create a curvature. Button it up and introduce bubble. 
select edge rings and then use uh, relax this relax the relax tool is also from loop tools auto smooth and this will be the source of our inner mechanism Let's change the display for this. Visibility. Uh, viewport display. Wireframe. New. Um, wait. Control uh, Shift X for ice tools. In front. Go to orthographic lip. And disable uh, see uh, disable what you might call it see through or in front. So let's give these things a, a um, primary or starter material. So I'm right clicking on this button here. If you don't right click, it will use the default, which is aluminum. So let's turn this into glass, a new material. And let's fix the, let's go here in the material properties. Let's fix the refraction depth. Okay, let's settle for this right now. Uh, settle for uh, this for now. And let's create, I'm going to create a water inside. Okay, water something. Go to orthographic. Some kind of liquid. Shift T. To duplicate uh, P to separate the selection and let's close this F Alt H so what is that uh, sphere actually let's name this top bottom Timer Sphere 2 Liquid Oops Liquid And what is the circle? Inner Okay, let's select the liquid Go to material And we're going to copy the material. It becomes its own material. And let's separate from this uh, glass material that we created earlier. And then turn off screen, sp screen space refraction. Actually, the inner mechanism type does not show up. But if this was cycles, it'd be easier. But 
we're not in cycle, so it's kind of limited. So if I turn this on, this glass here won't show the inner glass. No matter what I do. Maybe the roughness. No. So... Inner, no, not inner, liquid, screen space, refer. if I disable this, then I won't see the inner mechanism, so the only left thing left to do is to actually, uh, let's edit it la er, later. can actually set this, at, uh, set the pivot for this at this uh, bottom vert. Cursor selected. Oops. Selection to cursor. Or cursor to selected. Cursor to selected. And change the origin type of the liquid. Uh, origin location to the cursor. Oops, that's incorrect. Wait. Cursor selected. Origin to the cursor. Then we can. The liquid can actually sway inside. Okay, let's design it using the, let's uh, give it detail using the render flow add-on. Actually, I'm going to re uh, remove this. It's looking too sharp. Bridge each loop. So if you're new to Blender, don't be, just keep on practicing. Don't be uh, intimidated, intimidated by the, amount of stuff that you see in the UI and also um, Google helps a lot so if you if you can't understand something you could you can just Google it, Google it or ask in the forums <clears throat> Let's try this bit first. Linked flat faces and set the shaft is to 15 degrees. Unleash use random panels. Uh, depth to gotta switch the depth to point zero zero eight. So at this stage, since the tools are random, then you don't have to follow my preferences and settings. You can just use your own and uh, based on what you like, okay? So inset, inset thickness, this is the width of the cut line. And let's get rid of the symmetry line by clipping them, clip center. Panel size. Let's 
let's just Rachel. And in here, I'm just looking for something for a pattern that I like. So somebody requested a paneling technique of creating panels using uh, areas delineate uh, areas delineated by material assignment. So. I've been thinking about it and uh, I'll probably consider it. But right now, uh, the the areas, the different areas to paneling is easy, but the way of assigning the material, I'm just thinking how to make it faster or to assigning areas to be made as panels. So I'm thinking of a way to make it more uh, simp uh, simpler approach and more intuitive approach for that. But it will happen. And I will basically add it. So as you can see here, if you add too much subdivision, then you get this uh, really obvious bunching of the geometry because the subdivision in the script or in the blender script python doesn't work like the subdivision modifier okay let's settle for that for now let's try the other area link flat faces let's include this too let's give this a, a bit of a Geometry. Actually, this one too. Select this and this, and then rings. Space them out. Relax. There we go. Linked flat faces. Wrap around. So wrap around will be in the next update as well. And if I use the default, it will cut the angle on based on the cut angle threshold. Wrap around, it will wrap around based on the angle threshold as well, but it will not cut it. It will not cut the entire line based on the angle threshold. I hope that's it's a bit of confusing, but when I pass the updates, I'll explain it more. Okay. So you have the tab. So right here I'm going to create some kind of inner mechanism style look. So giving it more topology. Random loop extrude. I have a preset that I've been using. <coughs> So I'm going to use 80% of the faces and right here 60% from loop 1 and make the islands bigger from in loop 1 object 10% okay so I'm going to use original only so loop 2 object is not it's not sourced from the loop 1 object Instead, it is both of them are sourced from the uh, main object or the active object, which is the uh, top of our grenade. So if I change, you can see that if I change loop one object, loop two object remains the same. Whereas if I toggle this off, loop two object is sourced from loop one object. If I change loop one object, loop two object loop to object changes as well so let's use original 
so I can layer the effects. So right here, so individual solver path and path. So instead of them sharing the same solver and path, I can use different solvers for each loop object. So this is it. Solver, one, two, three. Sampling, recursive, and radial. Same with path. One is none, two is shoot. Two shortest, three is longest. Radial, the path doesn't work with radial. Radial is number three. So for example, loop to object, I change this to number three. That is radial, which is mostly square. If you have an evenly square topology, so I'm going to use uh, sampling for the solver and for the path. I'm going to use uh, none for loop one object, and let's try to use longest for loop uh, or shortest. Yeah, shortest for loop to object. So let's make this, let's make loop one object higher than loop two object. Okay. And now, since we have the settings, let's play with the uh, seed value and look at the stuff we like. Depending on the, uh, when you change the properties here, depending on the amount of uh, lag or how fast it is or how slow it is you can basically feel that you can add more subdivision to it if it's become too sh if if changing any of the properties becomes too slow for your blender to process then surely adding subdivision will probably result in a freeze okay so just watch out for those uh, tilt tail signs so okay so this is i kind of like this but there's an open space here so i need to create another uh, layer this time i'm just going to use a loop one object and reduce the uh inset to make it lower set this to five and probably increase the subdivision or three there we go so that looks like inner mechanism there and let's fix the uh, let's go uh, let's select the top uh, grenade and create details for this part Okay. So remember to create uh, to create to have uh, relaxed areas in your design. So the uh, model doesn't look too crowded. So the triangle of this part is having trouble, is making trouble with the clipping. So let's just use this part here. Uh, let's not use this part here. And 
There we go. Reset the clipping. Oh, that was nice. Where is that? It's, there we go. That's cool. Set this to zero. So you can layer D. Layer the paneling detail so you can create big panels at first and use that to create smaller and smaller panel details. There's a lot of possibility with the tools. All you have to do is experiment with it. Uh, let's Okay, I'll use this <clears throat> Now let's go with the um, Thingy here <laughs> thingy I'm going to try my settings. Ooh. This is I'm going to reduce the subdivision first. This five percent. And this is going to this is using no paths. Let's activate loop number two. Can try loop number three, four. Just remember that the more phases you use, the slower the operation will be, and the biggest contributor to the uh, slowing of the process will be the subdivision levels. There's also a wrap around here, which is going to be in the next version. So if I won't use it here. You can see that instead of being cut at that angle, it's going to wrap around. This needs geometry to work. This needs geometry to work better and can also create distortions on some part of the mesh, but it makes it, it makes the result better. But since you don't have this, I'm just going to use the default or the legacy. So this is mostly uh, long faces because this is mostly long faces. So we can change that by adding more faces or by uh, trying to even out the spaces. With uh, the trying to even out the face uh, face. Uh, size that's what I meant okay let's use this let's not use the entire geometry link flat faces This is 
good. Let's try other Okay, number one. How about changing loop to object? Loop. So I like this one. There we go. Some type of uh, chip-like design. And then, let's go to the inner mechanism. Linked flat faces. Again, this is inherent commands in Blender. You can search for it, linked flat faces. So this is not it. This is already in the, this is going to be used to remove it from the quick favorites. What we're looking for is, select link. I think this is it. Oh, not that. This is it. The mesh select. Uh... <clears throat> yeah, this is it. Add to quick favorites. So if you're having trouble searching for it, if you know the name, just search for the name. Oops, forgot. If you're uh, if you've selected too many faces, and you're ready to use the operator, for example, random extrude, or random panels, before you touch any of the properties to activate the uh, the script or the operator or the or confirm it using the OK button take a look at the subdivision first if it's too high make sure to you uh, make sure to uh, change it first so zero or for uh, the operators in for the operators in random flow that has that uses subdivision you can press control so for example here this has uh let's use two for example this uh, this has the you use two on the last operation you can press control click on the button to reduce the subdivisions to zero same with random loop extrude right now it has one one and one if you press control plus the uh, and click on the button it reduces the subdivision to zero it's okay or when you see this you can manually just change it this is the first of the uh, the first the first property uh make sure to make sure if you're not using the control key shortcut make sure that the subdivision cut is the first property you change because as, you, as soon as you change the property from the redo panel, if you're not using the OK confirmation type redo panel, it will activate the script. Okay. And this is not mirrored. So let's mirror this in the X, Y axis. X, Y. And let's... Go to work. Random panels. Okay. Point zero zero five. And let's play with the settings. Let's try recursive. Recursive. So I'm uh, the uh, currently the I'm rewriting the documentation because it's full of old stuff from the previous versions. 
so I'm trying to delete that. Okay, let's use this one. And create some inner mechanism look. We probably won't don't won't have to use it this in this part because it's being covered by the liquid. Okay. Random loop extrude. It's already this <laughs> Slow down. Oh, it's using one subdivision. Then five. Original only. Okay, let's fix the uh, clipping. Sixty. Too much square. So the, the the result will be depending on your topology and your object. So we might not have the same result. Okay, so this is randomized operation. I'm going to activate number two and use uh okay that's too much. Probably just use number one as well. And try eighty. Percent of the faces looks good. So that's our inner mechanism. Let's try and there we go. Random panels. It won't show up. Okay. Let's try this bit here. Linked flat faces. Let's try ten per ten percent on the. This is pretty sensitive. That's why I'm using only five to ten percent to twenty percent. But also, but you can use fifty percent if you want. Make it higher. To make it less uh le less busy, there we go. Makes the shapes larger. Okay, let's. I well, haven't saved this. Grenade. I should say uh, save it. Okay. Uh, hide this. Hide this also. Going to select everything and give it a base color using a vertex color. Hard gradient. I'm going to give this a gradient stop of three or four. And then manipulate the seed. 
can actually use island this looks good okay um okay that's select similar shift g and then type so i'm using shift g t so that selects all the visible uh, mesh type objects okay so vehicle map this is going to attach the vertex color this is cuber to the material there we go and I'm going to add AO multiply it just to make the um, delineation between the objects much uh, clearer clearer okay um, going to use the ghost node or the layer weight node color ramp There we go. <clears throat> this is our water. Let's add a bevel. Segment of two. Weighted normal. And manipulate the offset here or width. Okay, um, let's try and emulate cracks on this glass here. Control T, set it to normal, add bump, set it to height, change this to Voronoi, add a color ramp, set this to object. Uh, this is not UV, so I change it to object. Change the scale. This up, you can. Uh, there's a much better um, setup than this. This is pretty basic, so just just to get you started with the crack glass effect, you can search Google for a more realistic uh, approach. But this is. Uh, even using this uh, basic approach, you can see that we can we already have a bit of a, con a bit of a convincing uh, setup. So let's use point eight. Okay. Actually, uh, why is it cracked? <laughs> It should be military grade it's point six whatever okay crack glass good effect point seven you can manipulate the position here there we go and I'm going to open the material that I used in my other uh, scenes you can find the material in my patreon uh, it's basically the same thing uh, blender guppy uh, patreon slash blender guppy all of the posts there are free you don't have to be my patron to collect it it's all public okay hide this and hide the water i'm going to open the material you won't see the window because i'm already recording the
uh, a blender window. So what is it material five? Yes, it is. And now to change the scale because there's too much scale, too much scaling happening. Actually, I'm going to use the key instead. Append material. Hide this material six mama material six okay the light is using UV Okay, delete this, delete this, again, go to edit mode, select everything, and I'm just going to use smart UV project. Okay, that didn't help. Spherical projection, cylinder. Project from view. Object uh, Let's go back to UV This should be flat If you're using UV This should be flat Projection should be flat If you're using object Projection should be box Okay That uh, what happened to the lights? Project from view. Smart UV project. There we go. Much better. And let's turn up some of the lights for now. Going to focus on the grunge and make it better. Uh, actually, the scaling is probably the issue. What's this? And what's this? Okay. One. Threshold. Oh, there we go. The scaling of the... So, Simple Dirt is in my Patreon also. Go and grab that. One, and what's this? Oh, the uh, this is using UV and it should be flat. Okay, uh, let's fix it later. Actually, let's... How do you create another... You, uh, project from view bounds. Whoops. Smart UV project. Let's turn it off for now. And where is the grunge? This is gonna the grunge is connected to one of the colors tab of the simple dirt.
Okay. And threshold point five. Then Come on, hands. Don't fail me. Softness. Actually, it's inverted. So, what's better, inverted or not? Let's try the non inverted version. If we do decide to use this, this is actually the dirtiest. Okay, so this side here is too clean. So what I'm going to do is copy this. Control C. Control V. Oops. Expected a number. Control C. Control V. Delete this. So why did I control V? To uh, paste it. Sometimes if I don't paste it, Blender uh, says that the clipboard is empty. So that's how you avoid that bug. To paste it after you copied it. Multiply. And let's try and look and see what this looks like we can actually plug it to the transmission let's plug it to the um, transmission Okay, uh, let's manipulate the values. Actually, let's we still have the cracked glass effect. There we go, we have the dirt on the glass. And let's manipulate the metallicity of this based on the grunchness. So color ramp. And then it, the result of this is inverted for the roughness. So if I have uh, one, so pure white is one so that's gonna be one metallic and invert that is one metallic means uh, pure metal means it's gonna have zero roughness and full reflect reflectivity okay let's manipulate this There we go. Whoops. What happened to you, mate? Okay. We have a middle ground. There we go. And... Could actually turn this into 
a bump but if you're using procedural textures for bump it's going to slow the viewport it's a blender thing so let's see uh, this is all the let's use this for bump converter a vector bump set it to height set it to 0.5 this is going to be too high but let's just see the effects outright then you can then modify it to a lower value Here we go so as you can see the viewport has slowed down so if you're going to use this effect for close range renders make sure to connect this when you're re when you only when you're ready to uh, render the scene Now let's deal with the lights. Actually, let's use. Actually, I have the. Where's my. Random. There we go. Give it some procedural lights. going to copy an object from sci-fi key this one control c so i don't for objects i don't have to paste it to avoid the error control v oh my god <laughs> our grenade is actually as big as a So this is the bevel. And that's the only problem there. Shift G, T. Cursor selected. Empty. Shift G. T, select the empty and parent. You can press Alt R to reset the transformation as long as you don't apply it. And we need to. <laughs> We need to modify the size of the textures again. Damn it. Okay, let's use Instagram Square. I think this is two. Twenty. Dear God. What have I done? Five. Inner scale is 200. 100. There we go. And what is this stuff? This one. Five. 
Yeah. Five. The light seems to be okay. I don't know why. And our cracked were annoy. Our water. Cursor selected. Liquid it's looking to okay. Let's change the roughness to that, or maybe the transmission. No, no, R transmission roughness. Yeah. We can still change the um color for the Vertex color. So point nine, not too white, and point five. Okay, let's try this. And um, 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 um let's test out the other lighting. So the ground texture I got it from Polyhaven. And also the HDRIs, I got it from Polar Haven as well. Okay, let's use this. Set the color management look to medium high contrast. Cursor selected. I'm going to use track lights and add a lamp on the position of the 3D cursor. Make lamp and track. Position it, position it way over there. Go to lamp, set it to sun. Contact shadow, energy 2. Or one you can change the color to colder or hotter. Let's choose a bit of blue. You can rotate it. Press space to confirm. 
And now let's go in, let's go to depth of field, adjust the distance. Eight and there we go. Let's try and manipulate the rotation. Get your grenade. Subdivision is five. Stray six. Okay, five of this. Let's play with the lights, see if it's uh, we can have something else. So this is 8.9. Control C, just in case I want to get back to it. There's this one here. This looks much better. can actually uh, put a color up on the roughness of the ground texture and create a bunch of effects make it look like something else You can see you can see that it's it really changed the mood. There we go. And going back here. Straight inverted, that is too, it's too dirty, too dirty. And, yeah. Let's try and set up a turntable. Plain axis. And the, the timeline.
compare the camera to the axis object uh, empty I mean so if I rotate the uh, the empty the camera rotates with it I must can also parent the sun with the empty so the the sun also rotates with the empty object. And then selecting the empty I rotation going to the end uh rotate this R J three sixty and I rotation shift out Z to get rid of the overlays So I think the material materials need a bit more more work, but uh, so what we're looking for here is really just subtlety. So right here, it this needs more work. And this all this part also, but we're getting there. At least the design part is easy. Actually, I spend more time in the shading than actual than I do in modeling. Okay, so that is it for this video, and I hope you learned something about the. Uh, I hope you learned something from it about the little stuff that I uh, said. Some of the small stuff about Blender that I told you about, and also about the add-ons. Okay, so I'm going to stop here and. Uh, if you have any questions, use the comment section below or the link in the description. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.